New Zealand had an election six weeks ago, but it was only today that the new Prime Minister, Christopher Luxon, was sworn in. And alongside him, the new Deputy Prime Minister, Winston Peters, back again after weeks of haggling over who got what in this coalition government and what they'd all agree to do, the three main parties. And Winston Peters joins me now. Winston Peters, great to see you again and congratulations. Uh, how do you feel? Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a very exhausting campaign to get there in the first place. And the um, coalition talks were very arduous as well. But we've put it together and we're very confident about where we're going in the future. Now, I notice that this uh, new government is going to fight back against the official racism that the previous Labor government put in. This was a, a big crusade of yours during the campaign as well and before that. What are your priorities here? Well, our priorities are not to disown our history, but not to manufacture what it means so that in the end we don't end up with a thing called equality. In the end, the Treaty of Waitangi was about everybody in this country called New Zealand being equal citizens, whether they've been here for you know, 900,000 years or whether they arrived legally yesterday. So it's about nationhood. It's about being a citizen. And what a citizen owns to their, owes to their country and what the country owes them. And we'll not get there by a concoction of woke, dare I say it, um, activist ideas, where in the end, some people, like Animal Farm, are more equal than others. Right, so you're uh, declaring war on the idea of co-governance, where uh, bodies are divided by race and 50% uh, say goes to Maori, 50% non-Maori. You're also saying English first on government departments and government communications, uh, uh, you know, cutting back on the uh, uh, Maori language uh, in terms of official documents and, uh, and pronouncements and, and, and buildings and titles, right? Well, look, first of all, as someone who's always believed that... Um multilingualism is great for one's intellect and we've always been supportive of that but in the end all communication is about understanding and if you're going to enforce a certain language where most people and i mean 90 percent plus don't understand the department they're referring to or the idea or concept they're referring to then maybe just maybe your communication system has been subjected to some sort of plan that is pushing a racial agenda but not understanding and comprehension. It's pretty plain common sense, actually, but that's where we've got to. And a lot of people who have pushed this under the radar, unmandated, unelected agenda, just hate the consequences of being fronted and faced down. Well, I noticed a few journalists at your press conference today were a bit spicy about it all as well. But uh, I noticed you, uh, in your trademark way, uh, didn't let them get away with that. I enjoyed that. It's going to be entertaining. But you're also back as Foreign Minister, Winston Peters. Now, the previous government tried getting much closer to China. I was critical. I thought they were getting too close. Uh, your for, a former foreign minister even said that the, the Tanifa, a giant serpent of Maori mythology, was like the Chinese dragon, a symbol of leadership and, you know, a, a bond there with China. What approach are you going to take? Well, the same approach that I've always taken, and it goes like this. Whether I, we were dealing, as a, when I was first in foreign affairs a long time ago or now, with Niue or China, size is not the important matter respect is whether countries are larger than yours or smaller than yours if we're going to have an international engagement where the rules of law matter and all people matter then respect and fairness is critical and what i'm saying to china and they'll know before i even start again is that we respect the we ex respect them and we expect them to respect us in the same way as when we deal with the blue continent and the pacific people or indeed all around the world we walk in with the same view no one is inferior to us and no one is superior to us by count of numbers. Well, Sir Peters, your Prime Minister dismayed me by going along with the flow on global warming during the campaign, agreeing there was a climate emergency and all that kind of stuff. That said, during the negotiations, it turned out that he wasn't going to put the new Minister of Climate Change in the Cabinet. That's good. Um, where are you on making New Zealand, and particularly its farmers, slash carbon emissions? Well, the reality is that as we go forward in the next 30 years, we're going to possibly need 40 year, uh, more 
40 times more, uh, 40 percent more food, so to speak. And to do that, then it is critical that food production is protected. Now, the Paris Accord of 2015 specifically said that. And all I wanted those countries that were there in Paris in 2015 to remember what they said and ensure that food production doesn't come at, in terms of their demands, at enormous cost of loss to New Zealand, and dare I say it, all food producing nations. So take it you're not keen on uh, hitting farms with even more onerous, uh, you know, we had, excuse the language, fat tax and all that kind of stuff on cows. You're, you're not interested in uh, pushing that hard? Well, no, the reality is, though, that with dietary change and uh, indeed uh, new science, you can get a dramatic drop already and the science is there. So let's give these farmers a chance to get there uh, without making these awful, awful demands which just says... All cows are bad, let's get rid of them. Because the rest of the world will not stop having cows, not stop having agricultural products. We will just have cost our economy so much. Now, again, uh, let's get the science in front of us. Let's use it to the max, and I'm certain we can get there. And not go ahead with this alarmist type of approach, which has besotted so much of the university-controlled world, so to speak, and not the business end and the taxpayer end, and the worker end of our survivorship. Winston Peters, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for coming on the show on your first day as Deputy Prime Minister. Appreciate it.